Now, Nick Burns, Nicholas Burns, who was an Undersecretary of State under the Bush administration, was on C-SPAN the other day, and actually quite a defender of President Obama in general on all kinds of foreign policy questions, including Afghanistan. Uh, but he essentially said that the exit strategy now is that the U.S. is going to broker a deal between the uh, Karzai government and the Taliban, which is something a few years ago was, was uh, completely taboo to even talk about. Now that seems to be the exit strategy. What's, what's, what do you make of that? Well, I'm not sure if it's an exit strategy yet or not. I mean, I, I think the United States has been fainting, that is, the Obama administration has been fainting toward uh, you know, making gestures toward a negotiated settlement of some sort. But uh, at the same time, what it's actually been doing uh, has been putting impossible uh, conditions on talks with the Taliban or failing uh, to put forward even the minimum conditions for successful negotiation. I mean, the most essential condition, of course, is for the United States to signal that it is indeed willing to withdraw its troops on a timetable as part of a settlement, a complete withdrawal, um, and the Taliban have uh, said that they are willing to make a deal with the United States. But, 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 but isn't, the, isn't, isn't that the hitch here? Is I don't think the Obama administration has, I think, made it pretty clear, and so the, certainly the Pentagon has. There's no intention of a complete withdrawal. They, they want to maintain a troop presence. They just want the war over. Well, absolutely. That's the problem. They want to continue a troop presence. They want to be able to of course, carry on special operations forces uh, night raids uh, for the foreseeable future and beyond. And they want to be able to have troops there that they can use to continue training and for uh, actual combat, just as they did in Iraq, despite the fact that we will be told that the combat mission is over. I have no doubt that the plan is for actual combat to continue. So uh, there, there's a lot of, uh, you know, sort of uh, double dealing here in the sense of having presented a policy that, that appeared to be uh, one of getting out and, and being willing to negotiate and that the Taliban are the ones who are standing in the way while at the same time really not being willing to uh, do what is a minimum necessary for uh, realistic peace negotiations. And so so I, in, in, in some, I just, I'm not sure that the administration has yet decided that it's serious about negotiations. Right. And what else do they have? Well, I mean, that's, that's a very good question. I don't think they've got much going for themselves uh, besides uh, just mostly praying that they're going to get through this uh, without a complete collapse of the Saigon, of the, excuse me, of the uh, Kabul uh, regime. Uh, I think I made that mistake because I have been making comparisons, of course, between Afghanistan and uh, the, the last years of the U.S. war in Vietnam recently. And one of the ways in which uh, they are, there's an interesting uh, comparison to be made here, is that the Taliban have been able to carry out spectacular attacks on U.S. bases that have gotten much farther and done much more damage than anything the Viet Cong and North Vietnamese were ever able to do during the Vietnam War. And, and the most recent attack uh, in Kandahar province on Camp Bastion, as it's called, uh, in which uh, a large uh, squad of Taliban was able to penetrate the defenses of, of the base and get in and destroy six Harrier aircraft and kill 14 uh, U.S. NATO personnel, including a, gen uh, a lieutenant colonel um, who was in charge of the air war there from the base. That is a very, very substantial uh, uh, raid by the Taliban, which goes beyond anything they've been able to do. And again, in comparison with Vietnam, is far and away a much bigger uh, success. So this heralds, I think, a new phase in which the Taliban will be capable of carrying out some very big uh, successful operations against U.S. NATO forces. And that, I think, is part of the larger uh, strategic defeat or, or another aspect of the strategic defeat in which the Taliban have been able to convince certainly the vast majority of Afghans that they are in control of this war, not the U.S. and NATO. Right. Thanks for joining us, Gareth. Thank you, Paul. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.